Good morning, good morning. Today is Thursday, March 11th, 2021. Coach Rich's house. <laughs> Upper body work today. We're throwing it down. Warm up today. Mobility work and a little bit of core. So we're gonna do a bear to a down dog, and then we're gonna do a scorpion, which is pretty fun. You're gonna be laying on your belly. You're gonna be kicking your leg up and behind your back. That's gonna do a great job of stabilizing your, your core, your midsection, but also mobilizing your trunk as well. After that, we're doing one big main piece today. It's gonna be a five rounder on the minute, five exerciser, okay? So it's gonna be 25 minutes of straight work. We're gonna be doing a push up. We're gonna be doing a suspension row or a bent over row, a half kneeling seesaw press. On the bench, we're gonna go combination fly press, fly press, and then we're gonna do a little four way raise for some shoulder work. Finish today, functional core. We're gonna be doing what's called a Copenhagen plank. So it's like a side plank with your top leg elevated. We're gonna be working your adductor there a little bit. And then we're also gonna bring some weights up top and do a little racked march or a carry. So it's going to be on. Let's loosen up a little bit. Let's get some arm swings going, nice and free. Easy, move, move your head around, move your neck around a little bit. Oh yeah, oh yeah, let's go. Let's go, we're feeling good today. All right, so we're about halfway, almost halfway through March here, crew. So we got a couple weeks left on this last kind of, a, I'm gonna call it a, a build phase. And a couple things I want you to think about as you're training today, specifically in our main work piece, rounds one and two, I want you to select a weight that you feel very confident, in. doesn't scare you. Uh, you're gonna kind of use that first round, maybe even the second round, to really hone in on that movement. But by rounds three, four, five, possibly even round two, I want you to really push yourself today. So I want you to take yourself um, to a space where you're pretty uncomfortable. And uh, that's gonna be really important. That's gonna be really important because it's that, it's that space when you become very uncomfortable and you really have to push yourself. That's where that new muscle development happens. Okay, so if you're, if you're always staying with the same weights and the same reps, your body is a very efficient machine and it will learn how to accommodate that weight. And over time, if it doesn't have to adapt to any other stress, your body's gonna remain the same. So I guess that is a, a, you know, a personal question. If you want to remain the same, then by all means, use the same weight. However, if you wanna to continue to progress and to get stronger and to retain and maintain as much lean muscle mass as possible. I want you to push those weights today a little bit, okay? So that's coach's orders. Push the weight a little bit there today. Good morning there, Helena. All right, and then let's go into our cat cows real fast. We did these a little bit out of order. All right, all I was saying was, guys, sets two, three, four, five for our main piece. I want you guys pushing yourselves. So the rep scheme is gonna be rather low. We're gonna be hitting like 12 reps max. All right, so you're thinking, what could you do for 12 reps that's really going to, uh, to push you hard, okay? So that's the goal. All right, so we're gonna get into this warm up because this warm up is a little bit of mobility work anyways. Um, the first one we're gonna be doing, so we're gonna set up in a bear position from the bear. We're gonna engage our core and then we're gonna drive our hips up into the ceiling, hit a little down dog, pause in the down dog, drop back down to the bear. So this is my bear, I'm gonna stack my shoulders over my hands, my knees are hovering over the ground, core tight, pushing through the floor, hips are going up, I'm gonna drive my heels to the ground, pause, drop back down to my bear, pause, and go. When you're doing this transition from position to position, maintain tension through your core the whole set. The second thing we're gonna do is a scorpion. So the scorpion, we're gonna lay on our belly and <clears throat> I'm gonna have my right arm kind of at like a, a 90 degree, like a field goal. I'm gonna take my left foot here and I'm gonna reach, I'm gonna try to kick. Right hand and then I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna go left arm at a little 90 and I'm gonna kick my right foot over toward it. When you're doing this one, put a little bit of 
attention to your app. Don't force that one. So don't crank through your shoulder. Start with a smaller range of motion and then progressively reach that leg further and further. All right. So we're just going to do three quick rounds and we're going to alternate between each exercise 30 seconds uh, per set. So it's going to 30 seconds of the bear to down dog and then 30 seconds of scorpions. And we're going to do three total sets here, crew. All right. So quick little warmer upper. We're going to start with that bear to down dog. All right. Bear to down dog here, crew. Get that out of the way a little bit. Stack it up. Core tight. Ready? I'm going to pause here. I'm going to pause here. Core stays tight. I want you to get a little stretch at the top. I want you to push through your hands. I want you to work on your end range shoulder flexion, also known as your overhead position. So I'm driving back. We are doing a little overhead pressing today. So I want you to get comfortable with your arms over your head a little bit. All right, laying onto our bellies. That is obnoxiously loud. Turn that down a little bit. So I'm laying on my belly. My right arm is at a 90 degree. I'm gonna kick my left foot over towards my right elbow. Kick it. Set. Kick it. You should feel a nice stretch coming through your pec. You keep a little bit of tension through your core. And then we're going to be back up and resetting. So getting back into our bear work here, bear to down dog, core stays tight. Elevate the knees, lock in here, lock in up here. Think about keeping your abs tight as you go up into this down dog. So think about maintaining the good core tension as your hips are shooting up in the air. Think about pushing your hands through the floor as you go to that down dog. Push hard through your hands. Keep the core tight. Good. And then we're going to come back down to that scorpion. I'm going to do the scorpion again, but I'm just going to turn my body so I'm facing this way. You can see at a slightly different angle here. So my arms are kind of at 90 degrees. I'm going to kick my left foot over. Big reach. Just going with the range of motion that you have. Don't force anything here. If this is feeling a little sketchy on your shoulder, just be careful with it. Right? Be gentle. So we always want to kind of think about, hey, is this good for our body? And what I mean by that is, sure, there's going to be times where we're going to be uncomfortable. There's going to be good burn. However, there also will be times you might be doing an exercise and it just doesn't feel right on a specific joint. That's the stuff I'm talking about. So we want to be very cognizant of, hey, is this a, a muscle feel or is this a joint feel? And hopefully you can discern between the two, which is really important in terms of your longevity of exercise and your continued progress. So, I hate when people get injured, especially when exercising. So I want you to be your best self-advocate while you flirt with that line between intensity and safety. So that's, that's that line that we're always trying to balance. How hard can we go while still being safe? <clears throat> if we go too far, that's generally when you're in that injury zone. However, if we don't go far enough, that's when we get into that zone where you're like, man, Rich, I've been working out a long time and I don't look any different. And that's usually an indication of lack of effort, lack of pushing yourself. So as we get into this work today, that's the mindset I want you to have. 
How hard can you push yourself while staying safe? <clears throat> I should note that generally the longer that you, uh, you've been training for, your ability to discern between those two increases. So in the beginning, you might think, oh, I can't really push myself that hard. But after many, many workouts, you start building that confidence. And you think, and you know, hey, I actually have a, quite a bit more to give here. All right, crew, here we go. Five exercises coming up. Most of these exercises are gonna be multiples of 12, okay? So we're gonna be sticking with 12. If you can't quite get 12, all right, then drop it to 10. If you feel like you can do way more than 12, then your weight is too light. So I want the idea today that when you get to that 12th rep, that's like, it's hard. It's like a minimum seven out of 10 difficulty. So if a 10 out of 10 was, hey, I have to move this weight, I have to do this exercise to save my life, to save my child's life, that would be a 10 out of 10. I want you to like a seven, all right? So I'm asking a lot of you today, all right? So seven out of 10. So first one, it's just gonna be a push-up. We can do regular push-up, hands elevated or knees down, but make sure that you can do 12 good looking push-ups. All right, I don't care about 12 little half partial push-ups. I'm talking about a good quality push-up, leading with your chest coming all the way down, driving yourself back up. Arms are coming in about 45 degrees here. So if we can't get a, a full rep, maybe you get six good ones and then you come down to the knees, that's fine as well. Just focus on good technique, good form here, okay? Your second one is gonna be a suspension row or a bent over row. I'll be doing a couple of both here. So with our suspension row, legs are straight, hips are up. I'm gonna pull straight up and in. My palms are gonna remain facing each other. And we're shooting for 12 rows. If you're not doing the uh, suspension row, just grab your dumbbells, hinge back, and hit your row from right here. Either way, you're doing 12, that's the goal. <clears throat> Our third one is gonna be a half kneeling seesaw press. So you're gonna put a knee down. I'm gonna start with both weights here. One's gonna come up. As one comes down, the other comes up. So you're gonna alternate simultaneously here. For a total of six on each arm. Number four, we're coming to the bench and we're gonna alternate every rep, one chest fly, one chest press. So I'm gonna start with my fly, I'm gonna open up like I'm hugging a big tree. I'm gonna squeeze my chest together and then I'm gonna rotate my palms out, lower down into a press. Open into a fly, lower down into a press. Fly, press. All right, and for that one, same idea total of 12 reps, so six flies, six presses, alternating every rep. Our last one is gonna be our four-way raise. A little staticky shorts, come on. I'm gonna come out, come in front, down, back up. And we're gonna do six of these. So it's gonna come to the front, back, side, side, front, down. All right, so a lot of good stuff for our shoulders, for our back, for our chest today. Everything is gonna be a multiple of 12 reps, 12 push-ups, 12 rows. Six and six shoulder, six and six fly press, and then six of the four-way raise. I should say multiples of six. Five rounds. We're gonna go on the minute here, on the minute work today. And again, if you get into that 12th rep, and you were not at that seven out of 10, I want you taking it up. If you don't have another weight to go up to, you're gonna bump up to, to, uh, to 15s, okay? And on the single things, you'll go eight and eight. So you go one up, you go to 16. All right, we're gonna start with the push-up. Ah! Now, hard bodies out there, if you're like, Rich, I can do 12 push-ups all day. Okay, go feet elevated like this. Let's go 12 push-ups. And breathe, and breathe. 
So our focus today, we're building strength. We're getting stronger. Seven out of 10 difficulty at the end of, of each exercise. That's our goal for today. And then we're gonna take these nice long breaks <clears throat> so that when it's time to go again, your intensity is high, high intensity today. All right, we're going with our row. 12 reps here, 12 good quality reps. <clears throat> You're gonna be powerful through your pull. Brief little pause at the top. Let's go hard for 12, ready? up, heating up, heating up. All right, crew. Exercise three. This is going to be our half kneeling seesaw press. <clears throat> one of the keys on this one, when you have one over one weight over your head, let your opposite shoulder dip down a little bit. That's going to create a little more freedom up top so that your neck doesn't lock up. All right, here we go. Six per side. Downside glute is tight. Here we go. Good, breathe. When we're doing those, downside glute is tight. Abs are locked in tight, no arching back. All right, so. Remember, we're using this first set to really feel out what our working weights are gonna be at. So if you're thinking, oh man, this is feeling really easy, all right, then you know what you need to do for the sets coming up after this. <sighs> Exercise four, we're doing our fly to press. So alternating between a chest fly and a chest press, we're going six and six. Focus on your chest, squeezing together at the top of the rep. Here we go. Open up like you're in a big tree, squeeze your chest together. Once you get to the top of the fly, turn the palms out and then drive up and in. Last one is going to be our four-way raise. So I'm going to use fairly light weights here. So this is one you, you also want to be um, conscious of, specifically with your shoulders. So when we're doing these raises, think about using your shoulder muscles, not shrugging those weights. Keep your shoulders away from your ears. So remember on these, we're going to go out to the side, to the front, and down, back to the front, out to the side, down. Here we go. So it's side, front, down, front, back to the side, down. That was one. We're doing six. So we've been through our first round. So now is when you ask yourself, were the weights that I was using, were those appropriate? Were those giving me the right amount of challenge? So first one coming up is our push-up. If you got 12 perfect push-ups, think about making that push-up a little harder, okay? I'm gonna go feet elevated on these. Let's go to work, 12, come on. Breathe. 
Okay, okay. Are you at a seven out of 10? Be honest with yourself now. Give yourself a true, a true, uh, true answer. Not a, eh, that was, I, that was a seven. No, 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 true seven, true seven. So if a 10 is everything you got, you've taken three steps back from a 10. We got our row coming up next. We're sticking with 12 reps. If you're doing the, uh, the bent over row and you don't have a heavier weight to go, think about going up to 15 reps here, but if you were good, hit 12, let's go. press coming up. Man, I wasn't thinking that I was going to have to do that. But it was getting warm. Hope Jesse turned his little heater off. <laughs> you can use the same knee down or you can switch up. It does not matter a whole lot. What does matter is your glute is tight, your abs are tight. You're not arching back. As one weight goes up, the other one is going to go down at the same time. Oop. Six and six, here we go. Smooth. Whew. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Okay, fly press is our next one, fly press. Check in with yourself. You got the right weight. If you got the right weight, great. Go hit it. If that weight felt a little light, go up. If you can't go up, you're gonna add more reps. All right, so you're gonna go up to eight and eight. I'm gonna be sticking with my same weight. It felt pretty good. I'm gonna go six and six here. Six fly, six press, alternating every single rep. All right, let's go to work here. Open up, squeeze your chest together, turn the palms out, lower down. Six, six. Now, with this style of workout, if you get to that six rep and you're thinking to yourself, I'm nowhere near challenging myself at a seven out of 10, by all means, you keep repping, you keep going. Don't leave those reps on the table. I do not want you finishing this workout thinking, man, I really didn't quite push myself on that one. Come on, take it there today, let's go. All right, four way race. Side to the front, down, Back to the front, out to the side, down. That was one. Smooth. Core tight, chest up. Reach the weights away from the body. No shrugging here. Focus on your shoulders working. Smooth. <laughs> Almost get this up. I think it was four. <laughs> All right. Okay, we've done our first two rounds. So here on out, rounds three, four, five. This is work now, this is full challenge. Take it there, take it to the seven. Push up for 12 reps, y'all. Push up for 12. Here we go. Shake it out, shake it out. 
Remember, we're utilizing these longer rest periods so that when it is time to go, your intensity, your recovery is high. You're nearly like 90% recovered and you are pushing that next lift hard. That's the idea today. So I don't want this thing to be all about conditioning. I want it to be high work output for every set. Rows coming up. If you're using your weights, you're going 12. If your weights are light, you're going up to 15. 12 reps, ready, ready. Here we go. Seesaw press coming up here, crew. Seesaw press coming up. Ah. Seesaw press we're doing from the half kneeling position today. Half kneeling. I'm gonna go with my right knee on this one. Squeezing the downside glute. Abs are tight. As one comes up, the other comes down. Ready, ready? Lock in. Here we go. Shake it out. Shake it out. Bring that intensity today. Bring that fire today. Chest fly, chest press. Alternating reps. If that weight was light, you know what to do. You're gonna bump your weight, or you're gonna add three. So if last set you did eight and eight, this set maybe you're gonna go nine and nine, or 10 and 10, something like that. These are feeling good for me. I'm gonna say it's sixes. Fly press. Hip, hip. Chest up, good posture. Here we go. Open up like you're hugging a big tree. Squeeze your chest together. Turn the palms. Driving down. Bang, back up. Smooth. Feeling good. Coach is bringing it today. Let's go. Let's go. Side to the front, back to the side, down. Let's go to work. Ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. That was one. Come on. Side to the front, down. Back to the front, back to the side, down. Two. Let's go. Smooth. Focus on your shoulders here without shrugging. <laughs> Sorry for the sound effects. <laughs> All right, we're done. Three rounds. We've done three. Here we go. Come on, crew. Come on. Who's got stone cold push ups for me? Let's go. Stone cold. Let's go. 12 reps. 12 reps.
intensity high, intensity high. On the top of that minute, you're bringing it, you're bringing heat, bringing fire today. I want you pushing every set from here on out. Every set from here on out, take it there. Take it to the seven, take it to an eight out of 10. Test yourself today. See what you got. See what you got. We got rows coming up. We're hitting 12. Thinking about your posture here. Think about moving your shoulder blades together as you pull. Ready, ready? 12 reps. to work out at a kettlebell gym in the city and uh, <clears throat> a lot of times I would show up right before the, uh, the session started and I would be kind of cold when I got in <clears throat> not physically cold just you know, I didn't have, I didn't have any warm-up I jumped right into the workout half kneeling shoulder press coming up I'll finish the story in a second <sighs> one up one down downside glute is tight exhale <sighs> one for six. Anyways, we would get, and a lot of them would be multiple sets, um, you know, 10, 12 sets long where we do kind of similar things, a clean, a squat, a press, something like that. And when we do these things, it would be like an I go, you go. So I would do a rep and then you would do a rep. And we go back and forth until we finish the 12 sets. <clears throat> but I got this reputation for being kind of a sandbagger and I didn't do it on purpose. Like my first couple sets, things would feel so heavy. But then as the workout would go on, it was almost as if I kept getting stronger. <laughs> Fly press. And I think it was just a product of me kind of warming things up a little bit. Um, but my training partners would get pissed off because they'd be like, dude, I thought we were using this weight and I'd be constantly pushing them. No, let's go up another bell. Let's go up another bell. <laughs> uh, good times. Uh, one more. Ah, so anyways, the point of the, the whole story was not about me at all. It was about, you might notice that later into the workout, your ability to push and to drive keeps going up. And a lot of times that's because as you start training more, you start innervating your muscles. And what that means is your body's ability to recruit more muscles using its nerves, its neurons, increases as you train. Here we go, out, side, down. That's also referred to as proprioception. So kind of like our body's uh, awareness of itself and how to recruit our muscles. And your proprioceptors, this is a little geeky for you, they're turned on by all sorts of things. So they're turned on through stretching, they're turned on through high endurance work, they're turned on through kind of max effort, like as much as you could possibly push for one rep. So there's all these different components that go into how your actual, actual muscle tissue is innervated. And all that means is sometimes it takes multiple sets for you to actually push as hard as you can. Um, like in the powerlifting communities, when they do like a, a one rep max of something, they might take 10 sets to build up to that one rep max. Whoa, here we go, push-ups. Sorry for the long-winded chat there. Let's go, 12. Hey, this is our last round, come on. All right, I'll end it with this. If you notice through some of these workouts, 
the later in the workout you feel like you're getting stronger, it's true. That's exactly what's happening. Your ability to create more force is improving as the workout goes on. Whew. That's another reason why people who have uh, more years under their belt training, it takes them longer to warm up and to get to those uh, heavier sets. Versus a newbie where, you know, they might get in their first set, you might call that a warm up, and that was a total work set for them. Whoo! Rose, let's go! Ha. Focus on your posture. Pinch your shoulder blades together at the top. Seesaw press, last set here, guys. This is your last opportunity to get after this one right here. This is it. Make it count. Make it count. Good tension through the core. As one goes up, the other goes down. Smooth, controlled reps. Here we go. Took a, a sip of his own medicine right there. Got a couple extra reps. Fly press coming up. Fly press coming up. Whew. Come on, y'all, let's go. It's a beautiful day, the sun is out. There is not mounds of snow in front of our homes, okay? It's gonna be all right. Let's go here. Fly press. this out. We'll put a fork in this main piece. Come on. <sighs> All righty here, crew. Four way raise to the side, to the front, down, to the front, to the side, back down for six. Or if it was feeling too easy, bust out a couple more. Let's go. I should have. All right, big finish. Big finish today is gonna be awfully fun. I'm just gonna slide this a little bit. That'll work. All right, so crew, we're gonna be doing two things. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you what the Copenhagen plank looks like, and then you can decide how you want to set up. So a traditional Copenhagen plank, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna set up in a regular side plank. I'm gonna put my top leg on top of the bench and my bottom leg is going to hover off the ground in between the space of the bench and the ground. So if I set up like this, 
my left foot will be on and it will be like this, okay? Now there's a couple of different ways here to um, make this a little bit easier. The first one, you can begin by just scooching closer. So if I scooch closer till I get to the point where, all right, now this bench is kind of supporting my knee, I'm still working this adductor quite a bit and I'm holding that position. The further that I come away from the bench, the harder that's gonna be. <clears throat> if you don't want to use the bench or something elevated, that's fine. You can simply go from the ground and then you'll take this bottom leg and then just pull it in like this. That works as well. If you can, I like the bench method number one and then the foot on the ground method number two. So we're gonna do the Copenhagen plank for 30 seconds on one side and then on the other side. The second thing that we're gonna do is you're gonna grab a pair of weights and you're gonna hold them up at shoulder height. And you have two options here. So this is our, our front rack position. You can do an in-place march like this. All right, so I'm driving my knee up to hip height. I'm gonna pause, I'm gonna switch. Don't arch the march, stand tall. No arching back. If you don't want to march, take it for a ride. Imagine like you're walking on a tightrope. Stand tall, keep your core tight. And you're gonna walk heel to toe. Okay, so you got two options there. You can do an in-place march or what's called as a front racked carry. So two options. Woohoo! We're gonna run through this thing three times, 30 seconds of work, followed by 20 seconds of rest. Sound good? I think so. Uh, let's start with the Copenhagen plank. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, and I'm gonna set up just a little bit more in, so I'm gonna kinda get my whole shin on the bench for my first set here. I'm gonna see how that feels. This is a very challenging exercise. So I would recommend starting with the, the calf or the, the knee on there first and then moving further and further away. What you're gonna feel is your inner thigh, your groin has to work really hard. Same with your obliques here. Ooh, my bottom leg. This is not touching the ground. This is off the floor. Oh yeah, that works. Two, one. The other reason you would wanna go a little closer is if you have any sort of medial or inside knee issue, then scooch in closer to the bench or literally have the bench supporting the inside of your knee. So I'll show you what that looks like. I'm literally gonna have my knee supported on this side. You see that? So I'm still working these same muscle groups, but I'm really taking the tension off the inside of my right knee. I'm gonna drive my forearm through the ground. I'm gonna stay nice and square. And I'm still feeling my right adductor work really hard, but I'm putting my, uh, my knee in a quite a bit of a safer position here. Guys, give me a quick thumbs up if you can still hear me. Is that all good? Hopefully you can. Uh-oh, might have cut out. Racked march, here we go. I'm actually doing a little combination here. I'm doing a carry march. <laughs> that was a little double whammy. When we're doing our marches, think about your breathing. Breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. Stay tall, no arching back. Woo. Good work here, crew, good work. Good, good, good. Switch this thing over, back to our Copenhagen plank. Okay. There we go. All right, back to our Copenhagen plank. Y'all got a head start on me, that's okay. I'll catch up, come on. Lock it in, lock it in, squeeze. Squeeze, breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. Stay tight. 
Hold it. Hold it. 10 seconds. Five. Woo! And then we're gonna switch. So I'm gonna use this kind of same close setup just because my right knee still has a little bit of a, an old meniscus injury. And this actually feels pretty good on it. So I'm gonna set up with my knee supported by the bench here. I'm still feeling my adductor work really hard. I'm still feeling my core work. So I'm totally okay with this modification. Almost there. 10 seconds. Ooh, man, that is work, baby. Whew. Racked carry coming up. Rack carry coming up here, crew. Bells are staying up nice and high. <clears throat> if you're not going to do the carry, you're standing in place and we're doing the march. When you do the march, you're going to bring your knee up to hip height. You're going to pause and then you're going to switch. Pause and switch. You're going to stand tall. I want you to think about keeping your core tight the entire time. I want you to think about your foot that's on the floor, acting as a claw, your big toe, your pinky toe, your heel, gripping the floor. Drive that big toe into the ground. Whoo! All right. <laughs> Back to these Copenhagen planks. <laughs> Not easy. Not easy, but let's do it anyways. Come on. Remember, you can go with that bottom foot on the ground as well. Ready? Here we go. <sighs> breathe and squeeze, breathe and squeeze. This is the last time we're doing these. <sighs> if you need to, you can hike the knee up a little bit. <sighs> the leg in the straight position is going to be the most challenging. <sighs> Almost there. That's it, that's all we got. We can get one more. We can get one more here, crew. Lock in and nice and tight. Get everything long and stable. 30 second hold, two, one. Here we go. Almost there, 10 seconds. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I don't know about y'all, but man, that one totally highlights a weak spot for me. Wow. I never considered my adductors being weak, but that does not make them feel strong, I'll tell you that. <laughs> March is finished, let's go. Stand tall, posture. Core tight. Big toe through the ground. Switch fast, stick. Let's do a little um, half kneeling windmill here to kind of loosen up our upper body. <clears throat> a half kneeling windmill, let's do it like this. I'm gonna put my right knee down. I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna come outside my left knee like this. I'm gonna squeeze my right glute, core tight. I'm gonna exhale, I'm gonna come up, open, around, and down. Just a big, 
arching windmill here. Just like everything we do when we're going overhead, don't cheat it through that low back. Keep the rib cage down, and then we'll take it the other way. My left knee is down, left hand outside my right. I'm gonna exhale, I'm gonna come up, open, around, and down. Woo! Let's go into a, a couple little cat cows here. Cat cows, round your spine, exhale, push into the ground. And then once you're in the top of the cat, I like kind of shifting my weight side to side as I'm pushing my hands down into the ground. I get a kind of nice stretch through my scaps and my lats. Arch your back and inhale. And then one more time. Exhale, push into the ground. Little rock side to side. Let's finish with our half kneeling flow. Leg is coming up. We're pushing out, down. Turn one time towards it. Arm on the inside, turn one time away from it. Down, rock back, booty drive side to side. And then switch up one time, pushing out, down. Big turn towards the front leg. Pin the arm inside, turn away from the front leg. Arm down, rock back, hip shift side to side. Whew. 